Spasticity results from disease or injury to the central nervous system. Spontaneous increase in tone within peripheral muscles impacts on day-to-day -day function, movement and gait. There are a number of treatments that are described and used routinely for the management of spasticity and these include oral antispastic medication, chemodenovation treatments such as botulinum toxin which can be injected into the muscles with increased tone and using rehabilitation regimens with stretches and splinting to prevent myofascial or myotendinous shortening and secondary joint contractures. Selective motor neurectomy is a relatively new method of treatment for spasticity. In a patient with a static deformity and a static degree of tone, it's possible to selectively section branches to overactive muscles to try and control that tone in order to improve functional movement in the limb and maintain function in the affected muscle. The benefits are similar to that seen with botulinum toxin, except they provide a more persistent uh, improvement in spasticity without the peaks and troughs necessitated by intermittent administration of chemodenovation agents. The indications for selective motor neurectomy are voluntary motor control, MRC, grade 4 plus of power, no dystonia, a trial previously of chemodenovation showing a benefit with recurrent spasticity and persistent spasticity. There's got to be a functional impairment without significant joint contractures. This case is looking at the tibial nerve and its branches. So in this image, the leg is visualized with the hip to the left hand side and the foot to the right. The tibial nerve is entering the calf and at this point there are numerous branches to the key muscles in the upper part of the calf. And these include a combined pedicle to the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and a branch to the soleus and a further separate branch that goes to the medial head of the gastrocnemius seen in blue. So here the medial head of gastrocnemius is slooped in the blue sloop and then the red sloop shows a branch that's passing down to go on to soleus and in the yellow sloop there's a proximal branch into the lateral head of gastrocnemius. Seen superficial to the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle is one of the sensory branches and this is a sural communicating branch that goes on to join the sural nerve with the branch from the perineal nerve supplying the outer aspect of the foot and ankle with cutaneous sensation. This nerve branch mustn't be injured otherwise pain may result. Once the main motor trunks are identified and isolated in sloops, these individual branches can be stimulated to map the movements and confirm the anatomy. A tiny stimulation threshold is used, a normal interruptive stimulation threshold with a patient not having neuromuscular blockade will be around 0.1 milliamps. Often in a spastic muscle, much lower stimulation thresholds uh, are obtainable. After the individual nerves are mapped, they're traced distally towards the muscle and then under the operating microscope each of those individual branches is dissected to reveal a number of branches supplying different parts of that muscle. Selective neurectomy involves sectioning some of these motor branches in order to reduce the tone in the muscle but without causing irreversible paralysis of the whole muscle. Because the neurectomy is undertaken on the motor components of the peripheral nerve, then pain does not normally follow. Here under high magnification it's possible to see the individual fascicles entering the muscle and these are carefully mobilized and countered so that at least 50% of these can be sectioned. Normally a piece of the individual nerve is removed rather than simple sectioning to try and prevent further sprouting, regrowth, reinnovation and return of spasticity. This demonstrates the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle in the yellow sloop and the individual branches are being traced towards the muscle. The terminology for this type of surgery is called highly selective motor neurectomy and this is when a branch of the motor innovation to the muscle is removed close to or within the muscle. A highly selective partial motor neurectomy is when part of that fascicle is excised. 
a selective motor neurectomy would be taking one of the main branches after division from the motor branch and then a motor neurectomy would be sectioning the whole of the motor branch to that muscle. The cutaneous innervation shown in green is left to avoid any pain. We previously described the role of motor neurectomy in the management of spasticity in this paper in Effort Open Reviews together with this new nomenclature for determining uh, where the sectioning is taking place. Here the neurectomy is performed and individual branches are sectioned, leaving other branches to maintain some innovation. The strategy employed follows that originally reported by Brunelli in 1983, which was termed hyponeurotization or partial selective denervation in spastic palsy. Sectioning in nerve branch results in some denervated muscle fibres and intact adjacent muscle fibres may or may have innervation and the branches to those muscles may collaterally sprout and re-innovate the denervated muscles, resulting in a return of spasticity, return in motor strength, uh, but with larger motor units. In order to stop this adoption phenomena, either repeated neurectomy after an interval of six months or a neurectomy involving at least 50% of the motor branches is advocated. Although there are some technical nuances of the way we do the procedure in the nerve clinic, that can try and prevent this re -innovation. If you want more information, please contact us. Here, a further branch to Soleus is identified, and this is traced distally into the muscle. And again, this can be treated in the same way. So with careful, controlled, selective denervation, increased tone and spasticity can be controlled, allowing patients to have more normal gait and less pain and dysfunction. For more information, contact us through the Nerve Clinic. Thanks.